I think I can say in general terms that physical injuries and accidents are a very common trigger for FND and something I see a lot. Um, someone has a car accident, they have acute back pain, that acute back pain does something funny to their, and something, a combination of circumstances at the time of the accident trigger a change in their nervous system. So although there may have been you know, in commonly soft tissue injuries, uh, which should have healed or settled down within a few weeks, the person's still left with symptoms years later. That's a very common scenario. And usually what you're looking at there is a mixture of chronic pain problems, as well as uh, more neurological symptoms like weakness and tremor and things like that. Um, so you need a sort of pain diagnosis, really, as well as a FND diagnosis, although actually they're all part of the same condition usually. Most patients in that scenario, chronic pain is, is occurring not because of ongoing tissue damage but be, or musculoskeletal problems or discs or anything like that. It's usually occurring because the injury has turned volume knobs up on the pain pathways. And those volume knobs after acute injury normally get turned down. But in, a, in patients with chronic pain, the volume knobs get stuck at, the, stuck at a high volume. So the person continues to experience continuous pain. That in turn leads to muscle spasm and alter posture, which in turn makes other symptoms worse. So it all becomes a vicious circle. So that's, that's the kind of formulation that many patients need in that situation. And sometimes when they've had a bad accident, that's also had a psychological impact as well. And many people have post-traumatic stress psychological symptoms after accidents, which then also make things worse, although not everyone.